Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I can't stand sitting down because I'm normally <coughs> lecturing in a lecture theatre, so I'm going to stand up with your permission. Um, let me introduce myself. I'm Caroline Hunt Mattis. I am the chairperson of the Nature's Rights Charity in um, Scotland, which many of you will know is headed up by Mumta. Um, and I just want to say I come from a background of human rights and I have served in the human rights, um, the very first human rights mission actually in Rwanda. Um, but I've dedicated most of my life to human rights and I just want to thank everybody in this room because each of you, some of you individually and collectively, have been responsible for educating people like me who thought that human rights was the be-all and end-all of everything. And, and, and through your work individually and collectively, you have changed people like me and you have brought me into service to this community. So I really want to thank each of you for that. Now this is a, the Gordian Knot. Does anybody know what the Gordian Knot is? That was that which Alexander the Great could not undo because it was an intractable problem. And what we've heard today is this intractable problem that human rights and nature's rights, we just can't seem to, we can't seem to unknot the problem. Um, and you know, we've got the political will in this room and I'd just like to say the 193 <coughs> member states of the United Nations is not just the United Nations. The United Nations is we the people. It is each and every one of you in this room. And do not underestimate your power. Do not underestimate your power to bring this message onto the agenda. So that's Nature's Rights, which is the body that I'm part of. And I just want you to reflect on one word, respect. Um, what does respect mean? What is respect in each of your languages, in each of your native tongues? Does anybody happen to know what respect means? It actually means to look at, to take into consideration, to regard. And when we created our international human rights framework, we did not take nature into account. <coughs> how arrogant is that? You know, the, you know how short-sighted is that? But how do we move forward? So, the oversight of the international human rights framework is the thinking that the human rights framework is separate from the environment in which it's rooted. And we've heard this from each and every one of you in your own way today, the, the venerable speakers that came before. So what I, like everybody else, is, are asking for is paradigm change. But how do we do that? I mean, how do we actually do it? How do we step into our power? And one of the things um, I do um, as a teacher is I look around and I think, best practice, what is best practice that's going on in every other uh, philosophy or thinking? And some of you may know the, um, the work of Kate uh, Rayworth, who is an economist who is trying to turn around economic thinking, um, which has been responsible for a lot of the destruction of the planet. So with your permission, I'm going to close with her one minute video which is about um, how we actually affect change. In the 20th century, economics lost its purpose and started chasing the false goal of GDP growth. In recent decades, that has pushed many societies into deepening inequality, and it's pushing us all towards ecological collapse. This century calls for a new goal, meeting the needs of all within the means of the planet. In other words, it's time to get into the donut, the sweet spot for humanity. The 
that's no easy task. Today, billions of people still fall short of their daily needs, from food, housing and energy to healthcare and education. And yet, collectively, we've already overshot our pressure on some of Earth's most critical life support systems, driving climate change and the breakdown of biodiversity. What we do to this Earth in the next 50 years will shape the next 10,000. So let's replace that last century goal of endless growth with the goal of thriving in balance. And if we're to have half a chance of getting there, what economic mindset would be fit for the task? So on that note, um, I would ask, uh, well, one of the priorities of nature's rights, in fact, is to start dialogue with the OHCHR, that's the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, about how we introduce a protocol uh, on, on uh, the missing premise in the whole human rights network, which is, which is uh, nature's rights. So thank you for your kind attention, and um, thank you to all of you for all of your work. <laughs>